Hey what's up, welcome to another Photoshop color grading video. This time we will turn this image into this one. We will introduce much warmer color tones, make the whole image a lot more vibrant and get details back from the shadows. If you want to follow along, you can find the raw files in the description of the video. And now without much more talking, let's go. Alright, here we are in the camera raw editor for the base raw adjustments first. Let's have a look at the histogram. You can see there is no underexposure and no overexposure, so that is looking really, really good. The first step for me is to change the profile to Adobe Landscape, which will give the image more base saturation and also it will make the darkest parts a little brighter. Okay, then let's open up the basic panel and start working on the white balance. This is already pretty helpful to get this warm sunset look. So I'm just going to bring up the temperature and I'm raising it quite a bit. All right, that looks good. I don't think I need to change the tint, so let's leave it at that. Before I can continue with the color grading, of course, I need to fix the exposure since the foreground is rather dark and we do have some blown out parts in the sky, which aren't that dramatic, but I do want to adjust things a bit. So first off, let's just raise the exposure, revealing more details in the landscape in the foreground just like that maybe. And at the same time, I do want to bring down the highlights, of course, to prevent overexposure. So that's looking pretty good. I think I can work with this bright spot later to add some glow or something. Then I do want to raise the shadows. Let's see, that's looking pretty good. And let's also slightly increase the whites. Okay, base exposure looks much better now. I do want to make this image look sharp, so I'm going to introduce some texture. And I also want to bring up the clarity a notch. Perfect. And finally, of course, we want this image to be very well saturated, so let's bring up the vibrance. Looks pretty good to me. Let's compare to before. You can see the colors are completely different now. The green tones are a little too strong. I could try and play around with the tint for that. But I think I actually want to change that by using some masks. So let's continue with the local adjustments. And first off, I do want to work on the foreground with the green tint, as I said. For this reason, I want to try and use a luminance range mask and just click somewhere in the darkest parts of the image. That looks pretty good. We could further adjust it maybe. All right. In here, I'm going to bring down the saturation. Let's bring it down quite a bit. All right, that's already better. I could further improve this by creating a sky mask. And then let's just invert this mask so we get a foreground selection. In here, I'm going to further drop the saturation. And I'm also going to drop the temperature. Okay, let's raise the tint a little bit. But now we do have a pretty neutral foreground. That's looking pretty good. Then I do want to work on the sky, so let's create another sky mask. We want to make the clouds a little more interesting, so let's bring up the clarity. This really helps a lot most of the times. Just like that, nice. Then I'm going to create a linear gradient again for the top part of the sky, just like that. And in here I want to bring down the exposure Okay, nice. Of course, we also want to add a bit of glow. As I said, I want to use this bright spot to add the glow effect. So let's create a radial gradient. And I'm making sure it overlaps the foreground a little bit. So the glow effect will appear to be a little stronger. So let's bring up the blacks. I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Okay, then let's see, we could bring up the temperature just to give this area a warmer tone. And we could even add a specific color tone with that color box right there. Uh, let's bring up the saturation. So that's looking really cool. All right. I do want to enhance this glow some more by adding another radial gradient. This time I'm just creating a smaller one like this. So again, let's bring up the blacks. 
and then drop the dehaze. Perfect. Finally, I do want to work on the foreground, so let's create a linear gradient and just roughly place it over the water. In here, I am dropping the texture and I'm increasing the clarity slightly. Perfect. And that's it for the local adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. Looks much better with the glow effect. All in all, the sky is way more interesting. Now, however, comes the most important part for this shot, the color grading. So let's jump into the color mixer panel. I want to start with the hue tab. And first off, I'm going to drop the green hue all the way. And this will just add some more orange tones to this image, but it's very, very subtle. Also, I'm going to drop the yellow tones very slightly. Now let's head into the saturation tab and bring up the orange saturation and the yellow saturation. At the same time, I'm going to drop the greens. And then finally, let's erase the blues. Okay, looks good so far, but now comes the biggest change and that will happen in the split toning panel. So first off, let's work on the highlights. For this shot, I want to have a very, very warm look and I can do that by applying a very saturated warm color to the highlights. So let's choose the hue first. I think I'm going somewhere in this color range and now I'm going to pump up the saturation all the way and now watch what happens. We get way more saturated sunset colors in here. Let's jump into the midtones. And again, I'm going to use a warm color tone and bring up the saturation here quite a bit as well. Just like that. All right. Finally, for the shadows, I'm going to use a cold color tone and bring up the saturation just a notch. Perfect. That's the image after the split toning. You can see it's a major difference. Looks much better. But there's one final thing I want to do and that's in the calibration tab. And here I just want to bring down the blue primary hue and raise the saturation in here. Perfect. So at this point I don't really like how that church tower is kind of leaning backwards. That's because of course I use the wide angle lens but we can fix that in the geometry tab. Here I'm just dragging down the vertical slider and thus I'm just straightening that church tower like this. Perfect. By the way, you can see I already have cropped the image a little bit. All right, at this point, the only thing that's left for the raw adjustments is the sharpening, so let's do that real quick. Okay. So, some of you might wonder why there's a second image down there opened in the camera raw editor. That's because right now the foreground is a little bit too dark for my taste. But I don't want to raise the shadows too much in order to prevent noise. Therefore, I got the second image, which is a little brighter than before. And I'm going to use that to overlay the foreground on the other image. That means I'm going to copy the editing settings from this shot to the second image. So I'm holding down the shift key, select it, right click, synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. Now switching over to the second shot, you can see it's way too bright. Uh, I'm going to fix that by first removing that glow effect because that might be a bit distracting. And then I'm going to bring down the overall exposure. I just want to bring it in line with the other image. Of course, I don't want to make it too bright, but this looks pretty good. All right, so with those two images edited, I am going to select both of them again and open them up in Photoshop. So here we have both images stacked on top of each other. To blend them together, that's pretty easy. I'm going to select and here I'm choosing sky. With that selection, I'm going to hit the layer mask icon just like that and invert the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. And now we have the brightness of the second image as our foreground. We can tone it down a little bit by bringing down the opacity. But I think this looks pretty good. Also, let's mask back in some glow. Just like that. All right, then let's merge those two images. 
And of course I do want to clean up the shot so I'm zooming in. I just start by removing a few of those sensor spots. And I'm also going to remove this wooden piece in the bottom right corner. I'm just creating a rough selection with the lasso tool. Once that is done, I'm hitting Shift F5, select Content Aware and hit OK. Perfect. Then there's a blurry boat on the right side. Again, I am trying to get rid of it with the lasso tool. And let's choose the Content Aware fill. Well, that didn't work as expected, so I'm just using the Clone Stem tool and try to fix it that way. Alright, looks good to me. Now we can enhance the glow on the left side some more. Therefore I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to hard light, grab the brush tool and you can see I have a desaturated yellow color tone like this. I'm also going to bring down the brush opacity just like that and then I'm starting to paint in some glow. And I'm also going to paint in some glow on the reflection down here. Perfect. Now I'm still not 100% satisfied with those colors. We can adjust that a little more by using a curves adjustment layer, just like that. Here instead of RGB, I'm going straight into the red channel and drag that point for the highlights a little to the left. Just to introduce some warmer tones. Perfect. And at this point, I do want to merge those layers again. And now it's time to check out the Nick Collection plugin. Here I'm going with the Brilliance Warmth effect first to just add a little more warmth to everything. I'm very, very careful here to not overdo it, but this looks pretty good. Let's apply it like this. So I guess I also want to apply some more glow. In that case, let's jump into the Nick Collection plugin one more time. This time I'm using the Glamour Glow effect, making sure to bring back the saturation. Maybe add a little warmth to the glow. Just like that. And now let's go with this. So I quite like how this looks, but of course I don't want to have the glow over the dark parts in the foreground. So I'm just using a layer mask. And use the black brush to get rid of the glow effect right there in the center because we don't need glow in here. Otherwise, this looks really, really good to me. So I hope this Photoshop color grading tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.